Ladies and gentlemen, I found that nothing in life is impossible unless we take risks. Nothing. Nelson Mandela once said that there's no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that is less than the one we're capable of living. Now I'm sure when we were all young and still figuring out what to do with our life, now I'm sure many of us still are, our parents and our teachers have told us to dream big. My mom and dad always told me that if your dreams don't scare you, they're simply not big enough. But I never fully understood this concept of how big do I dream? See, I say, I say this only for me. I see, I dream to be someone one day. Now I see many people here do. And this desire that each one of us have, deep, deep down, to become someone, is ambition. Although this sounds simple, not every dream leads to something spectacular. So do what you feel passionate about. Take chances. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to fail big or to dream big. But remember, dreams without goals are just dreams. To a lot of people, ambition is kind of a mystery. The dictionary says it's an eager desire for distinction, power, or fame. But what does it really mean? Well, let's start with the word eager. All by itself, eager is kind of exciting. Kids are eager for their birthday parties, and I guess so are adults, only if they aren't embarrassed by the number of candles on the cake. People are eager to see old friends. People are eager to go on vacation. But have you ever heard someone say that they're eager for a better life? Eager to have a better family or eager to make more money? Probably not. And that's a problem because how I see it, living a better life, having a better family, making a lot more money, takes a lot of eager desire. But there's a difference between a wish and a desire. We've all heard people say that, I wish I could just do better. Do better at school, do better at home, do better in life. The I wish I could do better has to become, I have the eager desire to do better. And this mentality alone is the truth of ambition. Ambition can be good and ambition can be bad. Ambition is simply ambition. However, the actions that you take to achieve your goal, how you get there, that can be right or wrong. Now, a great example of this is Julius Caesar. I'm sure many of you heard of, have heard of him, but for those of you who haven't, Julius Caesar was a Roman general who named himself dictator of the Roman Empire. Caesar's ambition was so strong that he built an empire out of nothing. Nothing could stop him. Even his best friend offered the crown to the throne three times, and three times Caesar refused it. His ambition was so big. And he, could, he did anything to get what he wanted. But Caesar's ambition was considered so great that people thought he wanted to take over the world. And so his own friends did the only thing that they, that they thought they could do, and they killed him. People dislike ambitious people. Who knew? Who knew that being liked and being ambitious are two different things? Now, by a show of hands, how many of you think you're ambitious? All right, so a few of us. And now tell me, how many of you are willing to work all day, all night even, every single day, until you reach the top, until you achieve your goal? All right, so one of us. <laughs> now tell me, how many of you are willing to cheat and find an easy way out? <laughs> okay. But actually, cheating to achieve our dream is ambition. If you're so ambitious, and if you're not willing to put in the hard work, cheating is exactly what you would do. There's an American cyclist, his name is Lance Armstrong. Armstrong's desire, his ambition, was to be the best cyclist in the sport. And while well, he got what he wanted, and he's regarded as one of the greatest sports icons of all time. He won the Tour de France seven times back to back. He dominated the sports scene. He was on the cover of every single magazine. He was in an international spotlight. He was a household name. He was perfect. Until he confessed that he was doping. Armstrong was stripped of all his titles. 
and they received a lifetime ban from all sports. His he won seven Tour de France titles. His ambition was so great that it made him cheat. Now, I'm not saying that cheating is a good thing. It's a highly punishable risk to take when striving for greatness. So my question for you is, how will you achieve your ambition? And which way are you willing to do it? A big part of my life is tennis. I've been playing the sport for well over eight years now, and I can say I've gone through a lot in my young career. Yet, every time I play a match, I get the chance to cheat. I get the chance to call my uh, opponent's balls out. I get the chance to make really, really bad calls. But do I do that? No, because is that the kind of athlete I want to be? At the end of the day, I want to look myself in the eyes and say that I truly won. Five years ago when I started playing USTA tournaments, I lost. And I did not like it. I wanted to be the person holding the trophy. I wanted to be the person standing in first place and not second. This was my ambition. And the day before my very first match, I spent all day preparing, preparing mentally, preparing physically, gripping my rackets, stretching, making sure I was 100% ready for the big day. And sure enough, it came. I walked into the facility where the tournament was held. I saw all the players with the fancy bags, cool new shoes, expensive rackets. And I said to myself, there's absolutely no way that I'm going to win. I walked into my first match with that mentality, and sure enough, I walked out losing. 6-0, 6-0. At first, I wasn't surprised since I had already lost the match before it even started. Up here. I walked out to the parents' lounge to see my dad just standing there, smiling. The first thing he said to me was, don't worry. Maybe next time you'll win. After that, I registered for a few more tournaments. This time with some hope, some small hope, to win. I entered my second tournament, and again I walked out losing. 6-1, six, 6-2. Six, I again walked out to the parents' lounge to see my dad just standing there, smiling. We went to, uh, we went to the car to head home. And the first thing he says was, don't worry, maybe next time you'll win. I told him, I was filled to the top with the urge to win. It took control of me. Leading up to the third tournament, I had been practicing almost all day, training so hard, assuring that I win this next match. And sure enough, the day came, I walked into my third match, and I walked out losing. Again, 6-3, six, 6-4. Six, I again walked out to the parents' lounge to see my dad. Just standing there, smiling. I ran to him. I didn't know what to do. I was disappointed in myself. I was making my dad come out all the way over here to watch me lose. At that point, I never wanted to play tennis again. I never even wanted to pick up a racket again. Well then, my dad said, well, did you have fun? I'm like, what? What fun? You think I came out here to have fun? I don't know about you. I definitely did not come out here to have fun. I came out here to win. And then my dad told me something I'll never forget. He said, ambition can either go two ways. It can either be the most dangerous thing in the world or the most beautiful. He said, you can either achieve it and be happy or get crushed by failure. He said, the reason I kept telling you not to worry is because I know that one day you will win and you'll surprise everyone here. And with newfound hope, I started training again. I started training again. I was practicing every day. I was the first person in the gym and the last person out. I would wake up early in the mornings before school and go on a run, before anyone, anyone even woke up. I would mentally condition my mind, making sure I would win this next match. And with the tournament day growing closer and closer, I started training harder and harder, transforming myself to be the best version of me. And soon enough, tournament day came, I walked into the tournament facility, and I saw my opponent. We walked, onto, we walked out onto the court. I spun my racket to see who would serve, and of course it was me. I walked back to the baseline to serve the ball. I tossed the ball up, I served it, and while it was in, it was an ace. I had won the first point of the entire match. As the match continued, 
I got more and more comfortable and started playing better and better, leading to match point. Me and my opponent shook hands and we walked off the court. I walked to the parents' lounge to see my dad just standing there, smiling. But this time, I was smiling too. I ran to him as fast as I could. I hugged him so hard. The joy I felt with finally winning my first match was unmatched. That day, I learned by far one of the most important lessons of my life. Ambition can't be good, and ambition can't be bad. Ambition is a wrapped gift that everyone has. You can either decide to rip it open or gently tear it, revealing the greatness inside. Also, being overambitious and expecting yourself to do wonders is also a fault. It's the gift that is broken. Remember that just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean that you're getting a lot more done. Don't confuse motion with progress because you could just be running around in circles and not get anywhere. So continue to have goals. Take chances. Don't be afraid to fail. This is a quote, and I'm sure most of you already know this, but yesterday is history, and tomorrow is a mystery. But today, this moment that we're all in is a gift. And that's why it's called the present. So don't waste a single second of your life. My dear for you, as soon as you walk out that door, is to find what you're passionate about. Put all of your ambition into what you love and to do the right thing. Thank you.